Ari and my good buddy Damon Corneli. We're here at Winsong Dojo. We're going to do a little bit of uh, a judo work today, just sort of experimental work and, and playing around with different ideas relating to delivery of energy. When we're functioning in relation to each other, there's a big tendency in judo, like all the grappling arts, to try to treat one another as um, objects that we are acting upon. So I, I will view him as, well, he's just like a statue over there, and I'm just going to push on this and step over here and push this down and try to make this fall down. <sighs> like he's an inanimate structure. Like he's kind of a mindless thing, and I'm just shooting to create my, my action on him. But in reality, when we're working with each other, we have this, uh, uh, what's, what's going on is a lot more like we're, we're inviting each other into movement that we're not acting on our partner like an uh, inanimate object, but we're working with our partner and inviting them into situations and conditions by manipulating not only the mechanics and the physical structures, but also the, uh, the actions in his nervous system. So we know when somebody's pushing and he has this bridging function, he can pick up his front leg and lay w weight into me. Yeah, he's really pushing. When the man's pushing, it's engaging a whole set of architecture in his body. That's good. Let's go ahead. Stop. He's engaging a whole set of architecture in his body, starting at the fingers and the hands, the wrist, the tricep, down through the back of his body, down through his legs, so that he's putting body weight into me and forcing me backward. His, his whole structure is organized around that process. The other main job that human beings do is to be hooked up like they're pulling. So we could just, yeah, like that and be mm, in this pulling structure. And you can see that all the way from the wrist through the bicep now, the front of the body, the body will tend to lean a little this way and arch back. Uh, yeah, you have this pulling structure versus this pushing structure. And if you think about some of the original ideas that come out from Kano, he said it very succinctly that in judo, the principle of Jew demands that when you're in connection with somebody's body and they begin to do a push, go ahead and start to push, then my job is actually to pull. That you go with the force they're trying to exert and you just feed more of it. If he pushes successfully to do his job, he has a fixed point in which he's trying to deliver energy through my structure. Bang! And if I allow that to just hit me, boom, he gets to be in control. But as he does that fixed job, delivering energy, go ahead, I create my fixed job with it. I add energy to his push with my pull. Then you've taken his delivery of energy and you've wrested control away from him by fooling his nervous system. He's pushing with 10 pounds of energy. He actually engages his 10 pounds of energy, you add a few pounds on top of it in that same line, and his structure that was perfectly adequate to shove me over on my heel here, boom, yeah, becomes something that's hard to compensate for when it's overloaded in that same direction. The flip side of that is that as the man pulls, he tries to begin to pull on my body, ooh, to take me up over one foot or down the line, that as he pulls, go ahead, that we add energy and again in that same line in a push. So when pulled, push, <laughs> and when pushed, pull. Yeah. And even in the Kodokan Judo book, you'll see pictures. You say the principle of Jew, and there'll be this picture of this huge monster looking guy and this little tiny fella. And as the guy's pushed, he stretched him out way out over this foot and hanging him in the air like that. And then there's a second picture of a, of a gal this big looking brute and she's he's pulling on her and she's going huh she's pushing on him with one finger and people take that as fanciful sort of illustrations but it's actually very realistic illustration of what's going on in those moments those dynamic moments of tension as the bodies are trying to separate or the bodies are trying to collide the other dynamic we have to pay attention to has to do with the rise and the fall so that Every time Damon's feet come apart, there, his body has sunk down into a trough. He's gone into body drop. And if we, on the other side of this, go into body drop with it, we tend to 
again, exaggerate the same line of direction that he was making. And if we are extreme about it, we just don't ever let it come back up. He has a hard time recovering. The second half of the step as his foot comes forward and the second foot rises and comes right toward the peak, right towards his, yeah, so his feet, like where they're coming, to, where one is passing the other, is the peak of body rise. Body drop, body rise, body drop. And so in every foot cycle where we're stepping past our own foot, in normal walking, a yumiyashi, we have this rising potential as well. Uh, most of the world who works in off balance and throwing spends an enormous amount of time concentrating on this dropping function. And dropping function is huge. It's probably the most bang for your buck you get. But we should not ignore this body rise function right here. <laughs> and by rising up with his rise as his second half step, watch this again. We'll do it on this side. Right here. Woo. We rise up underneath it and we prop it in the air slightly. And again, this is not lifting hard. This is fairly light contact. But we prop him up in the air slightly and now he has to do what? He has an exaggerated drop when he comes off of it. So if you add extra height or extra time suspending your partner in his body rise, you can be assured that their physical mechanism and their nervous system has to have extra drop on the tail end because it's like a pendulum. It's always, if you, if you move the pendulum two inches out over here and you let it go, it's gonna go two inches over here and come back, boom. If you go five inches over here, it's gonna go five. It's always going to equalize. So if we only disturb him slightly, he takes his step, and we slightly disturb him up. And I'm just making myself come up slightly under him here. And then you relax this, his drop will be a little more than he planned. Now his drop, his posture is having problems with this, this whole situation. And he takes an even a recovery step. But the recovery step again, I'm ready for the, the rise on that. So it's it's mirroring the actions of pulling and pushing with the appropriate reactions, and it's mirroring the actions of rising and falling. And the next aspect you've got to think about is how we're working in relationship to the man's body. Because if I simply tried to uh, do this with isolated parts of my anatomy to him, I will tend to have fairly limited effects. So if I'm going to deliver energy, to Damon as he steps forward by pulling. And see how it just jerked him over on one foot and he sort of hopped? His nervous system gets a long time to feel that build up and to make that sort of compensatory action right there. He feels it coming a long way, in other words. He feels the build up and the, the shock, don't you? You can kind of tell, uh-oh, here it comes, I better be cool. If I place my hand here and I don't send a lot of signal, but I'm I'm leaving this casual, it's called uh, katsu hayabi, it's effortless action. I put my hand in relation to his body, however it's gonna be, wherever, and not even much of a grip, really. He takes his step, I take my step, and I bend my knees, and my arm doesn't really change much. He doesn't get any signal coming at him through my hands, and so it's hard <laughs> to respond to. It takes him off into off balance, without that feeling of pull. Now, am I pulling him? Well, technically, yeah, I'm tractoring the guy, but I'm doing it very casually. There's a neat illustration of this. I ran into with uh, uh, a, uh, an Aikido teacher named uh, Endo Sensei, and he has, a, he has a mechanism. Hold on to this, yeah. If I'm just gonna pull my hand in relation to him uh, and try to bring it to me, uh, and I get this violent sort of pulling action, uh, he can stop it every time. He's got great power. But what's very odd is I can just reach up and scratch my head casually. And there's very little he can do about that. <laughs> Isn't that weird? And it's so bad that I can stand on one foot. And again, if I pull here, oh, he was nice to me. There he goes. If I pull against this with my arm and my bicep and tricep and try to extract myself and get it to me quick, it just pulls me off balance. And yet, even on one foot, I can always reach up, scratch my own head. Different parts of the nervous system involved in this 
in this, this type of action, this type of very casual action that just collapses him. So when we make contact with our partner, we have to be really wary that when we get in here, am I mm, pulling hard and making pressure relationship, or am I doing this more mm, collapsing thing? And it's really in the sensitivity that you're sending to, to your own touch and your own pressure gradient and also the, 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 kind of, the kind of signal you're sending to him. The next little thing to think about has to do with when we have grips in judo, the habitual thing is to get a hold of the gi. And the gi is cool, but let down this one for a second. If I'm going to deliver energy, say I'm going to step back and deliver energy to him. If you watch right here at my hand, when I deliver energy, there's this moment where the gi pops out and it becomes, becomes a, uh, 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 an extra joint. It becomes an extra, uh, the, the beginning of this action is nothing, 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 and finally something when the slack comes out of the gi. And that's a big problem because that gives him a little moment in time as that gi comes from, from nothing into something where he gets to react to it. So if he's got a, a, a structure on me and I'm just flopping out here and I step back, there's this little gap right here when I try to use my body to, to draw him forward in a back step, for instance. It's very different if I hold my own gi to my body and I take that back step. Ooh, you see him vault up differently. Or if I hold his, I hold his gi in relation to mine so that the push structure becomes solid right here. So that the little slack thing right here goes away entirely. You can really find a lot of difference depending on when you want to engage this and hold it to you and then move your body around, wow, you get to be <laughs> very powerful with that point of control. But as long as it's out here and doing this kind of activity, opening and closing from the fabric, again, make problems for yourself. Now, there's another way to use this fabric that's kind of interesting. Because of that slack, he can be very stout, and I can try to twist his arm over. <coughs> like I want to do walking at Tommy. Oh, I can't get it. I can't get it. But what's interesting in this very powerful relationship, he's a strong guy, is I can always turn my gi over. <laughs> I can always work at the end of his pressure and his power to rotate the structure. Not to rotate his structure this way. He can stop this. Go ahead. He's stopping all this. But right at the end of it, <laughs> at the end of it, it twists. When he's making a grip, it's the same. I turn the uniform around his grip structure, and his whole, his whole power turns into something I can use. I can say, oh, walkie gatami. I've been here many times. So working at the edge of power instead of against the lines of power. So just to reiterate, we have to monitor the delivery of energy in terms of the, the pushes and the pulls. And again, if he's pushing, what do I want? I want pulling. <laughs> if he's pulling, I want pushing. Very simple. I want to close centers. If the man is going down, I'd like to go down with him. If the man's body is beginning to rise, I'd like to rise up with him to hold him in that elevated state longer than I planned. I have to mediate what's going on in terms of my contact with him in my own arms so that I'm recognizing whether the pressure I'm working with is one that stabilizes him against me and then makes it possible to take control or to work with this very solid, I mean, uh, very fluid sort of um, effortless feeling, collapsing feeling thing <laughs> where everything's just like scratching your head. Like you're no more power than you reach down to, to uh, tie your shoe. Because it's really odd. If I'm out here and he's got two arms on me, and I'm trying to reach down, I want to get down there and do something to him. I want to do a dropping thing. He's very strong. But over here toward my own body, I can reach down. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Out here, like I'm reaching towards his foot right now. He can stop this all day. 
I get my body next to it and I reach down to my own foot, <laughs> can't do anything about it. And again, that's, that's a nice lesson or demonstration that comes from uh, Endo Sensei that I, I really enjoyed. That there are mechanical places on the edge of the body, on the edge of the body like this, where you're working not against his power, but against the edge of his ability to have power. So if the man is pushing against us, he's got two fists and he's very strong, boom. And I come in and engage this with just enough power back. Anything I do to change my hands at that point and just change in relationship, you know what? Becomes something that his body has to compensate for. Right? Right? Right. Right. Right? <laughs> it becomes really potent. If I don't make engagement, his, he's out here just holding in space and I, but don't let me get pressed, just, 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 yeah, there you go. Then these are just moving. Obviously, there's no delivery of energy, ergo, there's no, there's no effect. But as soon as I push in and create that delivery of energy, and again, it's a pressure gradient that's pretty light, and you need to experiment with how little pressure it is. Is this enough? I add a little more. Now it's starting to get to be there. I add a little more. Ooh, there it is. But it's fairly light. You can still do it with a finger. There it is. <laughs> there it is. And it feels dumb, but you have to train yourself to get sensitive to the level of pressure that you're working with with your partner. So that when you're all tied up, you feel, is that pressure engaged? Do I have the, do I have the engagement on him? Because once that pressure is engaged and you know it's there, then whatever you do <laughs> with your body, his body will have to work, work with and against. If you overblow it, if I'm here and I'm overblowing it, it sends way too much signal and he, he gets, he gets messages all the time. I'm pushing really hard into him, <coughs> trying to make it happen to him. Won't work. Too light. Won't work. It's just like the three little bears. Got to be just right. <laughs> there it goes. There it goes. <laughs> just right. Once it's just right, once you get that sensitivity in your hands, then you get the sensitivity, you use other parts of your body to create that sensitivity. You're creating a, a reference point for your play, for your kazushi. So you put hands on the guy, and it's just right, right here too. Everything you do touching him becomes a problem for him. Because you're using that threshold, that critical threshold of pressure, not too much, not too little, but just right, in order to, uh, to create it. Now, Let's say the guy doesn't want to give you that pressure gradient. He's out here and you're making contact and he's very wary. He's not letting you, t yeah, he's collapsing into it. Just go on in and in and in until you finally get something. And it'll get there eventually. <laughs> so if he's pushing on me and I won't give it to him, eventually I'll either have to start moving or this thing will collapse right to my center and then he has it again. Because I can tell you right now, if he starts moving, it's going to, yeah, it's going to begin to affect me. Building up a sensitivity to that threshold of affect, what, uh, what Endo is called a, a, a Atari, which is a, 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 a Kudo term of hitting the target, delivering the energy to the target, boom. So that, yeah, you get this sort of thing out of the guy. This is what's really going on when we start playing in Judo and we start really developing Kazushi in, in the larger sense. So I hope this, uh, this little discussion gives you lots to play with in, in all these different parameters, and uh, thank you very much.